Do not delay nikah unnecessarily. Once nikah is ready, the two parties are happy, get that nikah done. So that any relation that happens between them thereafter happens in a way that is permissible. Remember that. Sometimes people say, no, my daughter is engaged. Brother, three years later, your daughter, no, she's engaged. I say, but brother, three years have passed. She had two abortions in the process. Do you know that? I'm not joking. I'm serious. My parents, you don't know what we know. They come to us for help when they cannot talk to you. I know. We cry when we see the children of the good people. Sometimes people we know and they come to us. You know what? I have this problem and that problem. But sister, you are engaged to the man. How could this have happened? You know, my father told me you cannot marry now. You are still studying. My, my, my. Allahu Akbar. May Allah forgive us. Really. Brothers and sisters, open your eyes. See what is going on. Ask the people what is happening. If you think we are not living in an era of hypersexuality, you are dreaming. You are dreaming. You are living in a dream world. We are living in the dirtiest society up to this age. There has never ever been a more hypersexual society than ours. Believe me, everything out there is about sex. And I'm saying this because I have to fulfill my duty as a scholar of Islam to explain to the people what is going on out there and how we are heading in the wrong direction because we are living with blinkers. We don't even know what's happening. Ask your children in the universities what's going on. If you have a good link with them, they will inform you. Ask them. Tell them what is happening or ask what is happening in the malls or in the shopping centers or at the workplace. You know, you can be the best and the, the, the most pious. Yes, if Allah has granted you protection, you will always be protected. May Allah grant us goodness. There are people amongst us and I'd like to hope that the bulk of us seated here, pure good people by the will of Allah, you know how difficult it is to remain on that path. You know how easy it is to sin. Today it is easier to sin than it is to abstain from it. Allahu Akbar. It is easier to abandon your hijab than it is to don it. It is easier to leave your salah than it is to fulfill it. That is because the environment has made it so difficult to engage in that which is correct. But my brothers and sisters, this is why I say do not delay nikah. It's not just my statement. It is a teaching that has come to us from the best of creation. Don't delay it. And at the same time, do not make it difficult in any way. We already spoke about the mahar, the dowry or whatever else it is. Either way, don't be too demanding and do not become a person who really makes it tough on their sons and daughters to get married. Because in that particular case, we will be held accountable in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why is it that you as a parent did this to your own daughter? You doomed her, you punished her. And this is what you did to your son. You made him, you, you really made him leave the deen in totality. It brings me to one example, living example, where there was a young boy whose father was being so tough with him that, listen to this, he wanted to marry someone who was ready to revert. So his father told him, no, not over my dead body. What am I going to tell my friends and society, my brothers and my sisters, my this, my that? Brother, Izza is from Allah. Your status is from Allah. If you had embraced this, it was going to be much better. So you can explain to your friends and your family, look, you know, I tried my best, but today's society, you know, sometimes the children are doing their own thing and we have to try our best saddidu wa qaribu to make the most of what it is and to guide them as best as possible. And, you know, we will see how best they can manage. But instead of that, this father chose to say over my dead body. So what did the son do? He asked for help from some of the scholars and so on. And sometimes there is a limited amount of help you could actually offer because if a man is being stubborn, you cannot really win. So after some time, he converted and left the fold of Islam and gone. Why? Because to him, he, he, the child was lost and the father is still proud of his action. I don't mind if he became a non-Muslim, but at least nothing happened against my will. And he told his family members, you know, uh, the, you, your children, if they want to do the same thing, you should also engage in this type of thing. How? The man, the woman was ready. So I had an opportunity to address this young boy. And when I spoke to him, he told me something that is really a question of the age. When I say question of the age, I mean sometimes the mind starts asking these questions. 
He said, you know, this woman is such a good woman that I married. She has so many good characters and conduct. She told me I'm ready to do anything. You know, I explained to her about the little I know about Islam and she was ready. And then what happened is, when my father and my parents said no and everybody disagreed and they, you know, the mother, he says, my mother didn't really mind, but she has to follow what my father says. So after some time, I, they questioned me, her parents, to say, look, we were all okay for our daughter to, you know, to enter the fold of Islam. Now, if, he, if she is not going to enter the fold of Islam, then why don't you enter our faith? So he said, yeah, it makes sense. You see? He said, yeah, it makes sense. If, we, if they refuse, I, I will not refuse. You people are not refusing. So he says, that is what made him turn. Now look at this. The young boys of today, this is the logic they are using. They will not tell you Islam is correct and Islam believes in all the previous messengers and Islam, Allah is one. Even the father perhaps doesn't read Salah correctly, but he was proud with his action. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive that man. Really, we tried very hard, but to be honest with you, it is only Allah who can bring people back. That's why I say it is foolish. Sometimes you might lose your child totally. Rather you lose them 